Bill is Parks and Recreation Advisory Board meeting to order June 12, 2023. Let's start with the roll call. Aaron Angel is not here. Um, Scott Conlon? Here. Thomas Davis? Here. Paige Lewis? Here. Sam Libby will, be, will join us later. Nicholas Lavello? Here. Dan Olson? Here. And Mr. Tim Waters? Let's go to approval of the agenda. Does anyone have any proposed edits to the agenda? Could we do cover Chris's presentation first since he's uh, got to travel back after public meeting? So just switch A and B and all yeah. the business. Yeah. Sure. Anything else? I move we approve the agenda with old business B before A. I second. All those in favor? Great. That motion passes. Uh, let's look at the previous month's minutes. Does anyone have any edits to the previous month's minutes? Great. If not, can I get a motion to approve the minutes, please? I move to approve the minutes. All in favor? I'll abstain. I wasn't here. Okay, with that, we will move to public invited to be heard. I have two folks. Potentially, are you going to speak with this? Yeah. Okay, you'll need to come and sign up over here. Okay, we can start with Ben Sargent. Oh, my name is Ben Sargent. I live at 744 Atwood Street in Old Town. And uh, last year, uh, we got together with one of the families to start a food crawl. Uh, and we were, Mary and I were driving around to work. The wife. <laughs> for, for our five different farms to buy the food that we wanted. And we thought, um, okay, this is crazy to have all these people driving around everywhere to buy food. Why don't we get the families that want the food and the farmers that grow the food to coordinate better? And so we we started a, we call it farm to family co-op. They were like a food club or a food co-op where we don't have a storefront. Uh, we just order from the farms once a week. They deliver and we distribute. So we don't store anything. Uh, I didn't know Ben was going to do an ad like this. So anyway. That's basically, so what happened is that it was, it was, we had so many families that wanted local, you know, clean local produce and meat and dairy that we um, couldn't get all the food that we could. We had more demand than supply, basically, with the local farmers, because the, in Boulder County, if you can grow a good looking organic vegetable, you can already sell it above retail. Um, and so, what we thought was, well, why don't we start growing? And as soon as we said that, uh, several people offered us land to grow on, uh, and the, we finally selected one property which has been under organic cultivation for 10 years, and we are now growing on an actual farm with a greenhouse and two hoop houses and dishwater, et cetera, et cetera, uh, in Lafayette. Uh, What's that? Point. Yeah, so <laughs> the, this land is only uh, about an acre and a half, uh, and it's a good training farm, but it's not really what we need. Um, and so, you know, we, uh, while all of this has been going on that I just explained, um, we've also seen uh, a good land that was once farming, even if it hasn't been farmed recently, uh, being developed in Longmont. Uh, and so we would like to propose <laughs> that um, we, we don't take uh, land out of uh, being open space to make developments. And so I don't know if that anybody here is involved in, in that zoning and re reposition, repurposing land uh, to be developed on, but uh, traditionally, all of this land was farmland, and um, um, there's still a lot of 
just really amazing farmland in Longmont, but it's disappearing into developments. So, um, who can we talk to about? How can we get involved? We have a lot of families behind us. We have uh, not just in Longmont, but we have um, we have members in Boulder, Lafayette, Bertha, and Loveland now. Um, and so it's it's more than just Longmont, but but we're in Longmont, and sort of the our core operation is in Longmont. Uh, I'd rather be driving to a ten minute to a farm in Longmont than thirty minutes to a farm in Lafayette. Um, uh, so I know that there's been problems in the past with uh, small uh, parcels going to you know vegetable farming and, and the instability of of, of that compared to hay farming. <laughs> but, um, but I'd still like to get involved in, you know, who, who do we talk to and, and how can we come up with a plan uh, to be, uh, to promote the idea of the concept of farming um, as something that's still important to Longmont and still important to the people who, who come to, to Longmont to live. And, and um, it's still, um, when you decide to move to Longmont, it's, you know, it's not because of the mall. It's because you, you have all this access to farms and, and beautiful open space. <laughs> so, um, so who, I, who do we, yeah, yeah who do I we talk I think to? it's probably, I mean, it's not exactly mm -hmm. under the purview of this board, I mean, unless it was particularly open space. Correct. That's that was really, so share, it's more planning you know, and zoning. Yeah, yeah, there really would be. For, this, for the board here and for our speaker too, I'd be happy to have David Bell and Director Parks oh, Natural Resources. Yep, Hi. I saw you present at Council. Um, Danielle Levine is, I always do that right yeah. Danielle Cassidy um, is our new open space manager. Great. And um, she's been working with me on how we're working our open space program. We do have an agricultural component to that. A lot of that is really large historical agricultural land that meets the water needs, the irrigation needs. Yeah. Um, some of those pieces make it hard to do small market farming on those properties. Um, and then what um, we need to look at is kind of like Ruth mentioned, the, the zoning within the area of the capital development. Because open space does not acquire properties within the development area of Longmont. So we don't really compete head to head with those areas that really are set aside for primary development or primary employment. So we, we do have some internal um, conversations about the kitchen touch of the idea there. I'd be happy to talk with you and Danielle and I and spend some time talking about sure. the work you're looking at doing here. Um, my past work, I've worked with a lot of the small local farmers for over a decade, um, listening to them on the county open space properties. Great. Thank hey. you. So, and David? David Bell. Okay. And Thank I, you, David. Right. And then could I add, um, we're presenting on the open space at City Council on the 20th of June, so you certainly could come if you're a long so, one. You, you could come and speak during public invited to be here at that time as well. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Danielle, correct me if I'm wrong, but once it becomes open space, it never gets developed. Isn't that correct? Well, I mean, the common kind of model is a golf course in here. It, it depends on the, it depends on the terms. Yeah. Um, like, for instance, a conservation easement, if it's written in perpetuity, then that's in perpetuity. You know, some of the things we have going on right now, and this doesn't compromise the open space, but, you know, we have um, some, some of our tenants are affordable housing tenants on our, on our city open spaces. So there's still open spaces, but we're, we're working on, you know, creative solutions okay, to, 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 you know, things that are going on. Mary? Well, I'm here and I'm signed up. Um, I sat on the City Sustainability Advisory Board, and at the meeting where, um, my name is Mary Lanzac, that's Sergeant, also a historical town here in the rambling food forest that we built that the neighbors kind of never hate <laughs> because it's messy. But um, but we love it um, here in Longmont, and I sit on the SAB, and I've become increasingly concerned in the four years I've been here that that board is very, very much focused on what I consider the top-down technocratic solutions to sustainability issues and is doesn't seem to have an interest at all in planting trees and building soil health and doing the things that truly capture carbon and that are truly measurable. There's a big they just want to focus on electrification and densification 
which is angering very many residents who would moved here for the open spaces for the for, for the fact that we're a historic farming community that's open. So I would, um, if you look at the uh, open forum where we spoke, which was um, uh, May 30th, um, there were four council members, including Joan, who expressed interest in having co cooperation across boards to bring in some of these life-based approaches to sustainability. And I suggested that we, um, we uh, bring in um, as, as much opportunity for people to farm locally, um, you know, putting in food in the parks. A lot of cities have done this. Uh, maybe cities that don't have quite the wildlands interface issues that we have, but, um, you know, fruit trees, fruit bushes, um, having more opportunities in zoning to um, bring in um, community farms and such. And so I would just like to ask this board if there's any interest in looking at the leases and seeing if there's a different way to use them to uh, open them up for local farmers. There's a great call for more land. So lots of folks would like to be doing regenerative with putting animals on land and so forth. So that's my process and approach. Thank you. I know that you all have planted some new trees around the city. I appreciate that very much. Um, I know that you all are doing updates on the master plan for both parks and open space, and they combine those into one master plan. And building on what Mary was saying, I think now is the perfect time to include regenerative land management as a central organizing principle and pillar in the master plans. I think we're already doing some of that work of regenerative land management, but it should be brought together as a stronger focus. If you go back to the climate action recommendations of 2020, I believe, and you look at this committee's assessment of that, you all said that it lacked enough emphasis on nature-based solutions, as Mary was just saying. So one, one way to address that would be to include regenerative land management as more of a stronger focus in the master plan and to allow it to filter out through the, the working programs and projects of the departments. So that's what I wanted to say. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else that wanted to speak? Thanks for taking time to join us. That we will uh, move on to old business, starting with an update from Chris Pascal on the Master Plan Feasibility Study. Good evening, everyone. Um, thank you for pumping me up on the agenda. I appreciate that. I hope you don't have too long of an evening, but I'll make this quite brief. Um, I think this is a really great opportunity in our process, and I do recognize a few of you folks from our um, recent open house on Wednesday evening. Um, to present sort of our status report on the Recreation Center Feasibility Study to this board. Uh, obviously, this is a great point for us to get feedback, comment, and discussion um, as we start beginning uh, the process of developing recommendations to take over the council to you know, potentially bring this, this uh, opportunity to the council for a longer term. Um, so to now let's go through a quick summary of the process, some of the things we've learned to date. Um, and certainly go through uh, some of the feedback we've been getting. We're sort of in the middle of the process of getting that feedback, and so this is great, a great time to share um, what we're hearing. Um, we're also going to present some of the program opportunities and then open it up for your questions and comments to help guide kind of the rest of this process and then take it through to, uh, to completion. So um, really, this is a very straightforward recreation feasibility study to understand the needs and expectations of the Longmont community. We want to continue to build recreation facilities very early on and sort of the trend in Colorado and have taken the benefit of that. And so this is an opportunity to understand the uh, needs of this community as you're growing, as you're moving forward, and make sure that we continue to, to set a standard in, in Longmont for quality of life and, and, and residents' expectations of recreation. So the goal of this is to bring forward something that's tangible, that's actionable and truly represents the, the vision of, of recreation in, in this community. Um, a little bit of 
background. Um, and again, feel free to interrupt me if there's any real pressing questions I don't want to get too long lead on any of these topics, but I'm happy to take a little deeper. Um, the background on this project or this process obviously dates back uh, several years. Um, there was a uh, recent bond referendum in 2019 for an ice and aquatic facility that was unsuccessful in that 2019 election. Um, but much of, I think, the demand or need within the community, uh, I think, is expressed by residents. is a little bit broader than swimming and ice. It, it, it felt like the feedback that was um, given from that effort um, sort of suggested that there was a broader need for recreation within the community that wasn't quite so focused on those, those particular amenities. And so that's something we've taken forward to understand as we kind of embark on this process. Um, there's also a parallel process, and I'm guessing many of you are familiar with it, so I apologize if I go into more detail, but the YMCA is also proposing a potential facility at Centennial um, Park that would include a significant aquatic um, amenity, a competitive aquatic amenity, potentially a sheet of ice, as well as other recreational components and some affordable housing. We met with the YMCA uh, last, last week and had a discussion about the goals of that project I think working with recreation staff, their, their intent is to be complementary to programming and find ways in which that programming sort of synergize with what the city is offering. So it's not a standalone sort of com competitive um, um, facility, but rather a complementary. Uh, and so in the April 25th uh, Council General Session, there was support for moving forward with this direction of the feasibility study um, and staff directed to continue those conversations with the YMCA to understand how we can kind of best forward on these facilities together. So that's a bit of the background. Um, we're sort of here in the timeline. We held an open house last Wednesday, the 7th. Um, there was some concern that the Nuggets game uh, affected the attendance. And of course, my hunting dilemma is also going to be a little bit late to the, to the game, unfortunately. And so we're going to take a we're going to take a second pass at this this Wednesday. We've already started advertising to see if maybe we can gain a little more feedback from a, another group of, of of attendees. So we're we're going to do open house uh, version three uh, uh, to, to Mike's room tonight, and and really run through the exact same agenda in order to keep everything sort of at the same at the same level. We want to make sure that we can keep all the information gathered in, in, in a similar fashion. Um, but the point being is we've gone through some market and demographic research. Um, we've really begun to understand the community, the drivers, the economic and population um, realities that allow sort of the, the, the potential for additional recreational uses, and that will really drive some of our recommendations. Uh, we've begun to develop program options. What you've seen in the open house and some of the folks that were part of that um, probably saw a little bit more of a, um, what's the word I'm looking for, sort of a high level kind of prioritization exercise, but we've begun to delve a little deeper into the program. We're going to show some of that again this evening. We've started looking at the site at Dry Creek Park and analyzing that. I'd say that's probably one of the places where we've gotten the most um, public feedback is the location and, and, and some of the mitigation measures that would um, um, allow that to be a, a successful location. And then finally, as we start really refining the program, we're going to move into some conceptual planning that we can share, particularly so that we can put some cost estimates to the project, understand sort of the realities of the program, and use that as an opportunity potentially to communicate back to the public uh, on, a, on a potential election. Um, we also will be running some cost and revenue analysis once we kind of hone in on that. So that's a big piece of our process. So that said, we talked about the location at Dry Creek Park really what is a, a, um, a site that's been identified on the 2008 uh, Parks and Recreation Open Space Master Plan as a potential for a public recreation facility. Um, it sits sort of outside of the core of Longmont, where as you can see other community assets reside. I'm not going to spell this all out to you because you can all tell what these facilities can do. Um, but just want to point out that that site location is something that we're studying now for for a, a good test fit for this facility. Um, and we're programming based on the feedback and based on some of the planning, um, roughly 90,000 square feet of indoor recreation, as well as a potential library, which in this plan is written as a little feature so that you just could, could all 
also continue in that the branch library. And we've also started looking at different ways that we could organize the site, but this is just sort of a snapshot in time of how that facility might sort of gravitate toward the eastern half of that property um, and sort of nestle into that, that, that existing hill side. Yeah. Uh, probably a good point to stop. Are there any questions or comments? I'm going to talk about the program, show you some images, and then we'll get into the discussion. But if there's specific <coughs> comments to the site, this would probably be a good time to chat. Yeah. I have a question. Uh, how subjective is the setting like we're seeing here? Like, how big of an area is an optional location for it versus where it's ending up and it's kind of presentable? Uh, this is very conceptual and very malleable, I guess, is the answer. In fact, we're looking at two or three solutions that put parking toward the east and push the building a little more west, um, maybe a little more linear solution. We're looking at something that's maybe a little more dense that tries to keep it a little more tight to the open space. So, so what is the generally the area bounded by that dashed line? That's, is that's, the plan area for that? And that sort of is. Unless, of that. Yeah, unless there's a reason not to. Okay. I mean, unless you guys, unless you go the rest direction and you guys are seeing another, another study, I think the idea is to sort of keep, at least at a minimum, keep the traffic as east as possible so that we're not drawing quite so much traffic into that, that dead end parking lot and try to bring people into a parking lot much earlier. There is some drainage way and other things on the east edge of the site that we want to make sure we're conscious of. Try to keep that western half of the site a little more focused on the open space. And one thing that I'll add, just and we can talk about this more later, but since you brought it up, I mean, I feel like the main barrier to this site is traffic and parking, and so I don't think that it's going to be a viable site until people can understand how that's going to be addressed. Because right now there's kind of one way in, way one way out. It's narrow. I mean, even if you put the parking there, it's still going to be a bit of a cluster in the entrance. So, and I'm sure you're very aware, but that's the thing that I hear that is hard to overcome in terms of a barrier to this site. And I actually like this site. I think it's a good place, but that's the one thing that you know I think is has to be addressed before this goes in belt. <laughs> Yeah, no, and I, I, I'm, I'm very sensitive to that. And, and so I would, I would say, I think there's a macro traffic question that relates to streets and schools and time of day and all of those issues that really can't avoid in this part of the neighborhood. And then there's sort of a micro approach to this, which I think is probably warranting a pretty detailed traffic analysis. Um, probably not something that you would embark on at a feasibility stage, just simply because it's a lot of money to invest if this project doesn't pass election. Um, but I would say, I think given the, the future turf fields, the fact that you're building a facility that's probably going to drive, you know, a thousand visitors a day, 200, 200 240 parking spaces is probably kind of the, the sweet spot for parking. We want to understand, first of all, how to best sort of quell that park, that traffic and parking, how to best locate it. Is it one large lot or is it a series of smaller lots? As I said, I really think this plan really warrants a, the bulk of the parking on the easternmost side of the site so that we can kind of mitigate people coming into the site. Um, I'd love to not park as much people, um, but again, given the uses, there's probably some complimentary uses knowing that fields are busy in the weekday evenings as well as the recreation center. So it's not like it's a complimentary use to the schools, for instance. So I think a detailed traffic analysis is critical to this site and critical to its success. I think it's a beautiful property, but you're right. If it becomes a traffic nuisance, then that's the only thing. So I, th I think it's the core issue of the whole project, frankly. Um, and, and we've been told by a fire that it has to have two entries to it. Yeah, yeah. Two, two entries and two exits? Four no, okay. it's got to have both two ways in and out. Yeah, okay, thanks. Like the, the existing <coughs> center does. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So to that point, we're, we'll be revising this site concept to really show how the parking will be dealt with, at least at a conceptual level. Um, and it might require some traffic mitigation. There might be some, um, some additional turnarounds or other things that would, would prevent some of that sort of dead end in traffic. Um, and that's something are there any other questions or comments related to the site? I guess I'll just say I'm not 
now that I appreciate that it looks like you're starting to integrate some of this surrounding habitat um, and building some connectivity between the sort of indoor outdoor space, which is the other primary thing that we have in this location. And I, you know, I do think it's nice to the extent possible to maintain as much of the natural area and kind of blend that transition. So I'm glad to see that that's starting to get integrated here. Yeah, it's it's a it's a it's a tough balancing act when you think about locating pretty significantly besides building on a what's right now a, a an open space property. And do you build that hyper dense and try to leave more property, or do you try to take it and sort of flatten it out and, and, and sort of hunker it into the land and make it less sort of less um, conspicuous? And so that's that's a that's a question. For for the record, it that's is not an open space property. That's a, Yes. Under the yes. city yes. definition, yes. yes, I keep saying open it's, space. That's, that's yes. a whole thing. Yes. 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 My mistake. I yes. 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 forgot my audience. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> this is not a light business. <laughs> <Sorry. laughs> Thanks. Yeah. So this this undeveloped piece of property awaiting awaiting uh, purpose is is uh, uh, hopefully going to be designed. That side of the room can start breathing again. I'm so, I'm so, yeah, I, I didn't even realize my, my mistake in what I just said. So. Okay. Um, so again, some of the summary input, and I'll just I'll go through this. There's a lot of content. We actually have an online survey, and there's actually a QR code here that we can give you all as well. Um, so that's in the process right now. We received a little over 150 um, um, uh, inputs in the last, say, week since it's been live. We're going to leave it live for another few weeks to make sure we kind of maximize the input. Um, but up until this point, we've conducted one public informational open house uh, in April, end of April. That included some polling questions, some Mentimeter questions, a little build a center activity that we've summarized and shown, we'll, we'll show you some of the feedback. And then there was a pretty good question and answer session. It was a hybrid um, meeting between in-person and virtual, and so there was a little bit of a, a um, challenge between gaining uh, sort of comparable questions, but we were able to get good feedback from both the in-person and the virtual session. And then last week, we also held another open house, and that was really more of an informational comment session where we had stations talking about site, program, pools, and, and sort of design um, questions. And so this is just an opportunity to give general expression. We weren't trying to create any type of polling as much as just gain information and discussion about some of those topics. And so I think we've been able to really kind of fill in a lot of the color commentary to the more sort of dry survey questions, um, understanding some of the discussion. And again, a lot of the discussion surrounding site issues, um, some of the programming issues. And so we're sort of taking all of that in and summarizing it and make that part of our ultimate recommendations and findings. Um, some of the activities that were expressed in some of the Mentimeter polling in that first, um, that first open house focused on swimming, exercise, uh, fitness, um, things you might expect, basketball, yoga, therapy pool, uh, deep water aerobics. There's a pretty passionate group that continues to stress deep water aerobics. Um, they, 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 they were very passionate about that. Uh, tennis, child sitting, gym, and then there's some others that sort of fell maybe outside of that initial kind of core group that we were also want to consider. So this just gave us some general feedback about some of the preferences, and again, we'll compare this to the survey uh, content and, and, and integrate these, these preferences into that. But it shows you some of the, some of the demand or some of the expectations. Likewise, we had a similar tabulation about build center exercise, and fortunately it aligned. These were more specific where we actually gave people selections rather than previous, which was sort of an open, open comment. Um, I think everybody here is in yeah, yeah. Like, great. We've got all that tabulated, and we'll continue to tabulate those as we um, uh, use those as different different groups. Um, and again, focus on fitness. I think the existing Quail Road Recreation Center is pretty limited in the fitness space, so that's not that's not surprising. Obviously, recreational water is a big demand. Um, very popular busy busy pools along that rec center. Indoor walking, jogging, uh, another high priority lap swimming. Um, and then as you kind of get down the list with exercise, multi-use classrooms, 
Chicago City, um, gymnasium space, and then youth senior activities, um, which is that multi generational aspect to the facility. An indoor playground was something that got quite a bit of interest, and then a potential teaching catering kitchen. Uh, East always sort of lands right on that kind of middle crust, and so that's a question mark that uh, will continue to come up. But um, again, if you want to is the on was the online and the yes, the yellow is the uh, was the in person and the blue is the online. So I guess we're going to that. So it starts really setting up in our minds a, a pretty clear prioritization of some of the most popular amenities um, that we're going to be uh, considering as part of the program. Um, we also asked this question, the new survey fixed this question a little bit better. Instead of answering a number, it says the less important, important, more important. So I think it'll be a lot clearer in the survey that's out on the street now. But we did ask residents, how important is this? And even though there was some confusion around the, the question format, it still shows significant support, at least between those people that participated in that, that session that you can see. So that said, we've taken a lot of this information and we've sort of collected that or culminated that into a program that we began, we've begun studying. Um, in the open house, we were showing two, and the idea there was to really get to get people to sort of comment on the activities, what's most important, as well as understand um, the amount of aquatics that we build, um, sort of weighs the budget toward the amount of other less expensive spaces that we build. So we're really just asking people to help prioritize. Um, but this program is the one that we've been digging a little deeper into that really kind of follows that prioritization that we've inputted through the current survey, the open houses, and all the feedback that we've gained. And it shows you a roughly 91,000 square foot facility that includes all of those priority facilities between aquatics, gymnasium space, fitness space, um, general community use space like the Senior activity area and youth activity center and your playground. And it really, this is just a diagram, but it really kind of gives you a sense of, of the scale of the opportunity that we think is potentially out there for this for this center. That's all single level? No, no, that's 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 what I meant. This is just a programming diagram. <clears throat> I would expect that it's a multi-level facility. It's just our clearest way of showing all the activities. Are there any questions to put point to stop and talk about the program for a little bit and just recognize some of the some of the um, um, priorities that we're showing? Is this a good time for board members to share their sort of feedback on this? <coughs> Absolutely. Yeah, the rest of this is just some pictures. Is, it, is, that, pictures. is that diagram proportional to the square footage? It's pretty close. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty close. How did how does the library index factor into this because some of these spaces could be library annex spaces, right. meeting room spaces, um, and that sort of thing, the senior activity area. Yeah. Our, our, our task was not to um, conduct feasibility on the library components. We were asked to integrate the library at least at the site planning level and as sort of a general planning discussion. and so. When we start developing concepts around this program, we will show how the library would integrate into that. Um, I guess the, we've had a lot of discussions about this, and there's a couple of different ways that we could do that. So I guess I look to you to tell us how much or how little do you want it to see integrated into this feasibility study. We're, we're able to kind of do either one. Um, there's sort of different models for that. There's sort of an integrated model where library and recreation services sort of share common uses and have common check-in and common um, integration and there's more of a separated model where you come into the lobby and you go left to the next and you go right to the library and you know they share lobby space and bathrooms and so I, I'd be curious to hear from you all how how much or little you want, want to see that integration. My knee-jerk reaction was that we're the latter in terms of the organization in terms of how you check in but um, I, I, I would like to see overlap in, in use of, of facilities because there may be different times of day uses that um, one would dictate uh, you know, use of the space versus another one. But um, it's, it's not sitting there and they're not double in you know, space, space right. needs. But, uh, yeah. 
I mean, I think you keyed in on the real big question, is why would you build multiple rooms, <coughs> multiple gathering spaces, lounge spaces? Why would you have a children's reading room on one side of the wall and a, and a child's sitting area on the other one that could have integration? Mm -hmm. So to the extent that it'd be nice to sort of consolidate some of the services or community of those services, but on the other hand, library districts and rec districts don't always sync up that way. You know, this is our project, this is your project. So I think to, the, to answer the question, I, I'd like to see some as much integration as we can um, logically push forward. Um, Makes sense to us. Jeff, yeah. is there a demand for activity centers and meeting rooms and catering kitchen and senior activity at our current rec center? When I think of a rec center, I think more like what we have, which is fitness equipment and a pool and a track and gyms. And I'm surprised that we're devoting a lot of space to community space. Well, senior activity is really about recreation programs specific to seniors. We really don't have a large meeting <coughs> space that is public in Longmont anymore. And one of the things that we believe is how needed. large is large. Those three put together in the museum aren't big enough. But they're not available enough. That's that's oh. the issue with all the programming that they're doing. So we're trying to find space for the public, as well as programming space, and they can be interchangeable. But you know, meeting spaces or uh, activities like big parties, receptions, that sort of thing, would be what would go into that huh. multi-purpose you know. Senior, Seniors have- so Should we call this a community center rather than a recreation center? Maybe it's both. I, I don't know. I mean, we did a lousy job naming last time, so I'm not the best person to help with <laughs> this name. Well, I mean, a lot of those things weren't on that top of that list, so like, people aren't, so it's not well, but they're on this square no, footage. No, no, exactly. Well, that was going to be my, my next question of yours. Is how did these things get into there? <coughs> well, some of them were. Some of them some were. I mean, just since you're on that topic, I'll just add that that's a concern for me as well, is it feels like, I mean, I know some of these are associated with recreation, but this feels like almost more than half of the facility is dedicated to non-recreation space. So I would just ask that we continue to evaluate if that really is necessary or there are other recreation features that we can add in here while still having some public community space. Help me understand what, what would be recreation. Classroom, classroom, teaching kitchen, multi-purpose meeting room. I don't Maybe know they have the wrong name. That's that. where we would do all of our programs in there. Yoga, well, yoga, there, there's a studio, but any of our general leisure programming, um, any any type of, of athletic uh, coaches meetings, any type of uh, trainings for staff would all occur in those spaces, which we really have, don't have available right now. We have one meeting space at the, at the rec center, which generally on the weekends is tied up with birthday parties the entire time. We look at those as programming spaces. Yeah. That, that's how we look at those, all of this programming, to, to fill up with a balance between, there is a community meeting. We, we, we know this. We know this just from our constant experience, that there is a community meeting for some open, some open rooms um, for parties, for all sorts of activities. But we look at those as program spaces. And Would you like to see them called something different? Well, I don't, I mean. I'd even, like to see an eight lane pool. Even mm -hmm. here in so Utah, I still don't really understand. Yeah. I mean, that just seems like open room space to me, which I can see value in, but I don't know how much we need to put that. Yeah. Where, where else are we going to do our programming? But I don't know what you mean by programming. Like, I'm having General a time, General leisure. Like, but what um, is that sewing, basket weaving, drama. Um, help that doesn't, that doesn't go in this other ballot issue that we're going to vote on. 
No, because there's there's no space at the rec center. No, 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 no. The uh, what's it called? The theater arts arts, arts. that right. doesn't go in there. No, that, arts, yeah. Total total recreation, all of it, general leisure, anywhere from dance to learning how to uh, basket weave. Well, yeah, that's rich, all. Rich that's all. Oh, yeah. these holidays. I, I might Stay offer a suggestion place. that the piece of this that is a big question mark in my mind, I would imagine, and we, we design and plan and do feasibility studies all over the state for recreation facilities and communities. I would, I would argue that very few would say, I don't have a need for a 600 square foot classroom program. The piece on this list that I think maybe exceeds that would be that large multi purpose room. That's like a community. Like 2,500 square foot. That might be the one where you all would have to decide as a board and as a staff to say, no, you know what, that's that's one space too many. There's a lot of large community spaces in there. And, I, and again, I'm not speaking for anyone. I would say the multi purpose enrichment classrooms feel like they go directly into your core daily program. You're always looking for those spaces for 15 to 20 people to gather for a class, to learn something. It's that big 3,000 or 2,500 square foot community meeting hall that you really have to understand is that something we need more of in this community? Does that, does that feel more as, a, as maybe a compromise in that area? I, I'm not saying that's a decision to make. I'm just saying help, help us, help guide us. I think people talked about classes and those types of uses. They didn't say give us a big giant meeting hall necessarily. Well, what was the build up to 91,000 square feet? Like, is that the right size for the building in some other way beyond maybe the popular things in there? No. Ironically, I gave you a little bit of a benchmark comparison too of other centers, um, <clears throat> just to maybe help kind of answer that question. And, and when you start looking at larger centers and communities that I heard they're comparable or regional to Longmont, this shows you kind of what other communities have. Now you have the Quail Road Center that's roughly 63,000 square feet. But you also have a community that's almost double the population in Windsor and Johnstown. Do you know where they Or Lafayette? I didn't check Lafayette. I guess it's probably Lafayette's 45,000. Yeah, we used to work there, so you should know that. I will say that Arvada, the Apex, is like probably 200,000. Yeah. Bison nice? Ridge? Bison Ridge is 100,000. I just did that in Commerce City. So, and again, I could, I could certainly add to the list, but I think there was a question, well, what, what does 91,000 square feet look like stacked up against other communities? I would say Loveland is probably in that, but it also has a, a little bit more of a full service senior center where they're up the entire senior wing. Um, but they have a pretty significant aquatic program. Um, I don't know if this helped answer that question, but where did the 90,000 square feet come from? It really just came from um, trying to align those needs that we've gathered with feedback to square footages and we're certainly happy to adjust and, 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 and modify that based on the, the activities that you all think are most important. This is by no means our, our recommendation. This is our yeah, first, I first shot across, across the bow to say how does this look? And if you think there are things in there that are too small, too big, you know, not not focused on enough, then we can certainly have that conversation. Yeah, I would say I shared the feedback about the various different general purpose rooms, like the difference to me between a group exercise studio, a classroom, a youth activity center, and multi-purpose meeting room is somewhat semantic. It is a little bit. And, and I would think one thing to look at would be designing for flexibility so you could have four or five spaces that could fill any of those needs. I know that moving tables in and out of a group exercise studio isn't feasible for every class, but it seems close enough that there's some crossover between them potentially for, for both programming and community use. I totally agree with that. That statement pretty much summarizes pretty much the trend in recreation um, is to build flexibility. Um, and, and I would say there are points in which you get to a point where the space is so multi-use that it becomes kind of multi-useless. So the senior group that says, gosh, the teams were in here earlier and they left a mess and we couldn't lock our things up. So sure, our sure. Yeah. But you'll get to that point where you know the answer. Um, but to the point that are we going to build specialized studios for certain activities, things like climbing walls, um, kitchens, those are single purpose spaces that have to support programming. And if they don't, then don't build them. I thought there was conversation about the kitchen idea being part of the museum or something. Like there was a conversation at some point about that being somewhere else. 
I recall that. Well, Erin talked about that, that she would rather have it at the museum than in the rec center. Well, that was considering one of the new conveniences, too. Right. Am I sort of hearing feedback, though, that of the spaces that are shown in this program, the ones that are sort of questionable to this, to this group, are some of the yellow spaces, some of the multi-purpose meeting gathering spaces and potentially the kitchen? Are those the ones where there's some well, questions about what you're fit? hearing too though is like there is a group that would like to have more like black lanes. Like so that like it's not just the what's on this side, but what's the tree <coughs> what do you gain? And could they be you know I think also helpful helpful to compare it to the size of spaces at the current rec center. Yeah. I don't know offhand how big the leader pool is at the rec center. I mean, these guys probably do, but you know, what is 16,000 square feet? It means nothing to me. Yeah, I, you know what? I'd be happy to do a comparison. Yeah, I think we could put well, that would help people understand what, yeah. what, what it means by all. Okay. I, if, if I just went down the list anecdotally, I could tell you your, 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 your current rec center is probably much lighter than this on lockers, mm -hmm. it's much lighter than this on leisure pool. Uh, this leisure pool would probably be 50% larger than that. Um, lap swimming is identical, that's six lane lap pool. Um, so you skinny lanes. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> skinny. No, no long, no long arms, butterflies. It's gonna um, no therapy pool. Uh, two court gymnasium instead of a three court. Um, oh, three. Three. oh, it is three. It's got a smaller, it's smaller crews though. It's a, it's a recreational three court. So these would be larger. That's about four thousand feet larger than what I think you have. Much more fitness. That's probably three times. The you fitness. said, Jeff, all along the fitness is. It's almost got to the point it's where I don't want to say it's, it's not But you get to come to the balcony that way, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. all those machines yeah. stuck so together and young. Right. So, so, and, and then the community yeah. spaces yeah. obviously fit within that. But, but I think it's, I mean, at 63,000 square feet, obviously it's 50% bigger. Right. Where did that area end up? Ended up in three pods and, and probably it's some multi use space. The other question I had was, um, on the conceptual site plan, right? that's like very, very early. And there are significant amenities that are shown outside of the building that I think add to this layout really well. You know, if there's a 5,000 square foot external fitness area for classes, that's an awesome asset that should be shown every time we show any of these in our building. And they're a significantly different cost impact because they're outdoor facilities that still cost money, but not building square feet. Other than this year, yeah. we're in a climate where our shoulder seasons are beautiful. Yeah, exactly. And if you have indoor outdoor spaces where you can open doors to outdoor rooms and outdoor patios, and which is very much not the case for Paradox right. Center, that would be it. yeah, it's very yeah. internal. And, and, and frankly, that was kind of the trend back in the nineties. You yeah. know, it was these very internalized buildings, and now they're becoming the opposite. They're very externalized. I mean, you know, rooftop workout spaces and community spaces that kind of fill in the courtyards. And, mm -hmm. It used to be buildings were very compact and very much about the perimeter, and now they've kind of broken themselves open, and they're very much about those those sort of indoor outdoor spaces that we can create. So I, I get, again, great comments, um, wonderful comments. Yeah, I think I'm concerned with like I think the group here and people in general. Like a lot of these things that could, and this goes back to my kind of like library comment, is there are like library ones. I think there's there's some things where it's like synergistic and get people excited, more people from different groups excited about yeah. like a rec center. Yeah. But then there's other things where they pick off the 3,500 square foot room, which doesn't have a definition for it. People are like, well, I don't want the rec center because they're clearly it's being too fancy. Right? Well, there's no advocates for it, right? It, there's right, there's right there's running there's around, around screaming, "Build me this thing." Yeah. So, but if it was like yeah. if it was defined as Sorry, a need yeah. that was going to be used by the <laughs> library as well as recreation or something like that. It, so I'm it having a flashback. Yeah. When we built the Longmont Rec Center, we purposely cut out class the other <laughs> classroom because the museum space would be available. Guess how often recreation has ever gotten in to the museum to do programs? Right. It's yeah. Never. Yeah. And and because they're using it, and right. so it. I'm just hearing us cutting, if we look at reducing or eliminating those, it's it's an opportunity that we miss. No, I, I think I think what you were saying though is, is a really good point earlier, is we need to market what these things <coughs> are better than just big blobs of empty rooms. Yeah. Because yeah. people are gonna be like, wow, that's really expensive empty rooms. Yeah. We don't, if they're gonna think about this, then they haven't thought the plan out well. And that's probably my fault. We're, we're at a preliminary stage where I'm dealing with some still new and blobs. Yeah. And the next phase is to take this and build very communicative, three-dimensional.
original plans that would show tables and rooms and people working out of different centers and do all the things that. So I, th I think what you're what you're basically doing is helping guide us to the next step and say if you're going to show the space, then then sell the activity, show people what's going to happen in there. What is the uh, progress or state of this kind of drawing when we put it up? If and when we, well, first of all, present it to council, and second, on a ballot. Yeah, that's What's not, it that's like? not this. Just, no, not, 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 not. I mean, well, last time it was zero. Yeah. We had yeah. no yeah. clue. Well, that's, there's, that's the July deadline. Yeah. Yeah. I, mean, I can show you some examples. So, example. so we're going to have a yeah. footprint or a, a quasi drawing, so yes. very different than the last ballot issue. Well, we had those last time. No. Yeah. We were not allowed they to use them. Ah, okay. Well, so we did some good Yes, because we're. So just a sorry. Well, that's okay, Jeff. So um, July eleventh, we're looking at going back to council, right? I think we have the wrong date. Oh no, it's the eleventh. Yeah, I look at it in. I'm like, oh, it's not the eleventh. I keep saying seven eleven. Yes, yes, seven eleven. Yes. So <laughs> we would at least present this information uh, to council, and then we'll talk about some of the other ballot uh, initiatives as well as a setup for council to discuss which things they want to move forward because they they need to be having those conversations in july to do their two readings to put them on the ballot in august mm -hmm. so when we go in july it is our goal to have drawings that would represent what the the 91,000 would possibly look like. That could be used by anyone if they want to be in favor or against the facility. It is important legally to do that ahead yes. of yes. August. Yes. yes. Yeah, not, once not we critical, once it, but yeah. it's important. <laughs> yeah. have, all you, have all of you seen the graphics that were produced for the 2019 study that weren't part of the public election? No, no. 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 I, I, I mean, I'd have, be happy to humor you and take two seconds and pull them up on my directory and show you what we did. Yeah. To give yeah. you an idea of the graphics. That would give us a great idea of what this thing's supposed to look like. I don't want to take any yeah. more time. I just want to add two yeah. things before yeah. you yeah. leave this. So one, if it is potential that the library is going to be combined with this, I would suggest that you do two like get down to two um, drawings like this. Yes, yes. One that's library, one that's not library, just so that people can see that. I, I don't know why that didn't decide that. And then the other thing is, I heard you say maybe arts at the YMCA. Do you know if that's if there's still a question about that? Part that? Of yes, yes, that is. I should have said. Because if it's not, it's a, then it's there's a whole other <laughs> 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 yeah. I mean, look, It's not building it, it's the YMCA. So I don't Chris, the only I'm thing bigger than that. open space is not talking about ice. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I didn't discern <laughs> ice. Yeah. Yeah. Can I ask one more question? Yeah. On the three court gymnasium, we talked about how it's a different size than the current. I think, I think they're current recreational. Yeah. But they're recreational. But they're different yeah. court sizes? Yeah. They're really no, tight. there's no they're really space tight. between the courts. Oh, so okay. I, mean, I believe if I'm not mistaken, I may be wrong. I think they're 74 foot Three short courts. They're, yes. they're recreation courts, and we're programming these in high yes. school size courts. Yes. It just gives you more yeah. space to do half court and you want to go to this area. And then half court, you're going to how many pickleball courts fit in the three court? Because I know that's zero. Well, it's zero. 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 Well, so that's the common apps, though. I mean, you look at the, the amenities so, list if you want. You can get three to your full size court. The yeah, if you want. pool area at the rec center now is 16,409 total. Right. Six. Yeah, so it's a it's a little bit larger. Yeah. I'd love to see those renderings. Yeah, yeah, no, they're really graphic. Graphic. Yeah. Yeah. of what we would see. Yeah, if we yeah, were happy to show them. Yeah. 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 So what happened last time was that the, these weren't available, and then once they were, it was too late because it looked well, like you were pushing for again. Yeah, yeah. Like the traditional like the city recreation. So they still they, seventy thousand. Everything that's used up. We get the tradition is to make correct. Public. And that additional twenty to is what we're the second getting uh, used. Right. 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 That's the that's the. Yeah. So, so this is a study that they're doing right now for the city of Fort Collins. And this is a diagram that we took to council a little while back. This is their 
20,000 square foot library connected to the lobby with a gymnasium, leisure pool, lap, outdoor spray round, lockers. So this is kind of representative of the type of plan graphic that you might, and this is a little fuzzy because it's linked, but and I don't have internet, but um, just to give you an idea how we showed an, a library plan integrated to a recreation center plan on similar stuff. Um, but I can go ahead and pull open the graphics that we did for 10 by eight. <laughs> Meters <laughs> by yards. Sorry, I didn't grab my glasses, so I'm using my mouse over here. here. Yes, <laughs> and you could be running laps at home or flat tires, swim lessons, and I mean, I don't know. Okay. okay, so uh, drawings. So there is an example of the plan drawings that were um, shown for the ice and. and Aquatic facility, so you can kind of see the lobby and the locker rooms and the, the pool. So, so we're hoping to get something similar to this to take forward to council that expresses the program that we just went through. Feels a little more like an actual municipal mm -hmm. building. You can see the people, and um, so hopefully that's kind of headed in the right direction of what you can expect from the next stage in the study. And then my favorite part, which we actually really were disappointed. There's the final one with the long mall logo in the floor and the and projected light onto the ceiling and all the people and the aquatics and the ice. So, so at some point, the hope is that we'll get to some graphics that express the beauty of this potential project. You can give this to the Y since they're building it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is it. I'll call Chris Coker right now and yeah, say, yeah. I've got your building done. Um, so to give you an idea, yes, you're, you're looking at kind of the meal being cooked in the kitchen. And, um, we're not yeah, we have an, out, we'll get an outside. We, we did. We did. That was even cooler. But I don't know if you'll love that design. So, um, yeah, there was there was some additional diagramming where we kind of showed how the exterior design and the building kind of integrated. Um, we had this kind of cool idea that we wanted to do. It was kind of the water and ice idea, and that there was a sort of chasm that went between the two that mm -hmm. kind of played one against the other um, conceptually. Um, let me see if I can find that exterior. Cut those off pretty quickly. Didn't really work on them much. But, um, no, I don't. I don't think I have those or anything I can easily open. But we did a really kind of a fun exterior rendering. Um, but but we did. We we produced some really I think some pretty expressive graphics that really showed. Um, yeah, these are some of the conceptual vision ideas of that ice and water concept. Um, but no, I think I think. Hopefully, we'll get to the point where we get something that we can all kind of agree, consensus, this is the right mix of activities, and then we can produce some really nice graphics. So what is it? Uh, is there more presentation? Are we interrupting? Or? No, no, you're, there's about 50 really cool pictures of interiors of recreation spaces if you care to see them. But What's if the not, that's, we can call that uh, process for us and you and the staff to be ready by July, what did you say? 11th. 11th. I mean, there. That we we meet once. We meet July tenth, I guess, yeah. and that's it as far as this board is concerned. So, are we, this is our one and only chance? Well, by I think tenth, you're done. I think first and foremost, it's reacting to that program because once we react to that program, then we can start putting together a diagram that integrates that idea to the plan concept. Now, we all know that whatever goes to election as far as a plan concept isn't necessarily what we build; it's what we can. So, I'm, I mean, this is what I'm saying. I'm not too concerned that if you want to have, if this passes election, we want to have time to manipulate that plan. There's certainly an opportunity for that. But what we want to do is understand the program, the scale, at some point, What's the cost. What's in there will influence whether we make some yes. cost the ballot. Absolutely. So, we have to be very thoughtful about that. So, that's probably the best conversation this evening is to maybe not have so much um, maybe maybe not be so linked to the diagram and more have, have we really captured the list and I'm happy if, if it would be helpful to do maybe a comparison of, of Quail Road Center and, and do kind of a side by side that we could distribute and re review 
um, if there's particular spaces that we do or do not support within this um, program plan, that's that's something we'd like to understand sooner than later. So I add, I, I think maybe that that diagram is what threw most of us off. <coughs> initially, I went, oh, the, the multi-purpose room is nearly the same size as the recreational. Yeah. When we hit the numbers, though, it's probably it's not way exactly. more represented. It's just this bottom. Like yellow section represented by the yellow and purple sections. Yeah, that's a good point. Because uh, when you stack the numbers, yeah. it's seventy thousand square meter. That's quite meters square feet of recreational space, traditional, right. and then twenty thousand of that yeah. space that you guys missed out on. I wasn't obviously there last time. Sounds like you guys missed out on getting these important meeting spaces as well. And I think it, it does appear to be a lot more of that space when actually traditional recreation is still 70,000 something. That's a, that's a good observation. And frankly, yeah. the diagrams are not doing us any favors. We just have this fear of putting things out too quickly or too detailed. Yeah. Because then we have the opposite problem where yeah. we're looking towards. And, um, so to the point, I think you framed it perfectly that if, if we're comfortable with the idea that it's predominantly these recreational spaces, you know, maybe the aquatics could be slightly larger. There's a big question mark of how many lanes that we show, not knowing how many lanes would be built by why, potentially. Um, I think the three-court gym is one that we kind of heard a lot of support for, so that one's probably a more, I've never heard a rec professional say I have too much gym space, you know, ever in my entire life, so that might be one that, and the fitness, obviously, trying to augment what you have now being so limited. Um, so many communities got You guys look at having a small exercise studio and large. Like I heard you say it as one of the classrooms, but I wonder if we did. putting that, you know, in that recreation side, having a small Absolutely. exercise studio that you know could be somewhat flexible, but if you're thinking about like cycle classes and even yoga and then Well we do that now. Great, I know, but it's I mean, it's like it's a labeling. Fun. It's like Yeah, I think we need to have two multi purpose studios. That's a good suggestion. All rooms are I would almost swap some of that. That's a good that's a good small exercise studio. Yeah, I think we got to ninety one thousand square feet and I had to put the tag box on it, but I think it did make a pretty good problem and it's probably a better solution. Would you go back to the uh, <coughs> the site plan idea? Yeah, absolutely. And I should point out too, not to not to get too enough, these are all gross areas, so they're all mm -hmm. grossed up to account for storage and circulation and everything else. So it's ninety one including all of that. One thing I'm interested in is just uh, this is really helpful to see how it's fitting into the rest of the site. I think it's a it's an amazing piece of lower case O open space <laughs> yes. right now, and then you can see a lot of stuff from there. And it's open and very accessible. And I mean, it's wide really open to the west. What we talked about, if it's a more inward facing sort of like quail like is, it's not very appealing to the access and outdoor space. Where to me, it's really exciting. There's picnic area, outdoor classroom. There's a garden there. I want as much seating as possible. This would be feel like part of the park, not a standalone rec thing in the park. Yeah. And I think that's a very compelling way to present it. And I think when you start thinking about spaces that are sort of internalized, they make sense to sort of mm -hmm. anchor. And we've already started looking at this by sort of cranking this guy around so the aquatics sort of leans out at Long's Peak, the community space kind of leans out at Long's Peak. We do the fitness. Yeah. We've actually got the media fitness on an upper level looking out over the pool so that gets those same views. So the whole idea is to take this plan and kind of get it so that all these spaces capture that western expanse. And then the library probably actually moves the other direction, not because it doesn't want those views, but because it needs sort of direct parking access and other things. And it might actually, because it's a lower scale element, it might be a nicer neighbor to the, to the residential since it can be kind of on low scale as opposed to gyms and pools. So we've really started kind of manipulating the mass and the scale and the setting where it's probably more sensitive and frankly it takes advantage of that lowercase open space and views. Mm -hmm. Is there any other plans or thoughts that's not here um, of other outdoor like program space? You know, um, interesting that you mentioned that. It's always an open space. I, I won't I won't bore you with a lot of pictures of our work. <laughs> um, but I will, I will show you, we do a lot of work with heavy timber and wood and 
you ought to get some of the stuff that um, I was trying to get the outdoor stuff that we have shown in here um, that I think is kind of as well. Just there's a there's our product community in the Hall of Ice and Rivers to be handy if we have that yeah. type of space. But yeah. you know if that's not the program we're looking for. Sorry, I'm gonna go through this too fast. But, um, you know one of the things we've really considered is you know how you create a building that's really integrated to its site, integrated to the public realm, integrated to public space, creating outdoor gathering areas, outdoor rooms, um, you know, maybe things like food trucks or other, other uses that on weekends could potentially support that type of use. You know, for us, it's, it's you know, how do you create the sort of magnet or other, other outdoor amenities and activities? Um, not necessarily spray ground, maybe that's an option, um, but really just trying to find ways that, you know, using the juice as a site either for Just, just trying to create outdoor space that, that feels integrated to the building and feels like those uses become part of the experience. Mm -hmm. That's that's kind of our goal at least as we start thinking about the concepts. Lots of glass, although I did have a lot of discussion the other night about bird, bird deaths. Cut that too. <coughs> was the first few sticky notes were all about the bird problem. You could deal with that. We're doing rec center in Jackson Hole today. Yeah. And that's it's right at the Cusp of their elk meadow preserve, and we're doing this uh, um, film that's sort of a blur film on the glass that's supposedly. I kind of hope to get that. If you, you know, if you cut the rest of the woods out of the you know, 10,000 acre elk preserve, you kind of want to look at it. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't have windows, I think we'd get a lot more flack, but I'm trying to find ways to integrate that into the, the experience of that film. <laughs> So I, I don't mean to take a lot of room in this board. You guys have a lot of important issues to discuss, but I feel like kind of creating this more broad picture of what this potential concept of the center could be would be helpful. And I, I wish we had more opportunity. This is sort of an abbreviated process. But How many square feet is that Fort Collins one we saw? That one was about sixty-five thousand because it doesn't have a ton of fitness. And it's only oh. a single floor gym. It's really an aquatic center with a few other things. Yeah, it's about sixty. Um, the space outside of the rec center, are you, is the concept for Dry Creek, where it is currently the, that, op, that open land, would that be programmable, like Roosevelt Park um, sort of thing, or would you just keep it as yeah, you know, activity it center, activity mm -hmm. space? The, 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 yeah, the can you go back yeah. to the site? Chris? Yeah, so if you're looking at the west side of our site, I'm just, I'm just thinking when he was, we're, we're Talking about on the community side, the community program, the, park, right. the west side of the park. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, that would probably stay natural there. Further, so direct where it says existing athletic field, directly to the west of that is phase two, which has got soccer, baseball, it's got a um, water feature with the, the stream there, and a permanent uh, slot entrance. Okay, yeah. It's, it, but between disc golf and the building, it would be just more parking. More. Yeah. <laughs> more. Like, there's not I'm, nearly I'm enough parking. Yeah. 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 Right. If you see the scale of parking. No, I agree, but it's somehow yes. parking has to fit. Maybe on the east side. <coughs> slide the buildings west. And there, I mean, the master plan has an outdoor pool in that uh, area. Right there, there yeah. Um, just even that's yeah. and that's something the master plan for the park is something we kind of hit on that that would be something time to relook at it. It's been 15 years, and what can we change around? From what Steve says last week, it's, it's around 2026. I, and I know there's lots of things. There is a new park that Cool, already. It's just to the north of that existing athletic field. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. kind of natural, but <laughs> <laughs> it's long. It's long. It's long. It's long. <laughs> So one final question. You don't like the idea of a large meeting space or event space? Well, actually, looking at his numbers, it was exactly the same size as the leisure pool, 3,200 square feet. But the picture was four times bigger. Yeah. Look at the yeah. so, yeah. picture. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. yes. That's my fault. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think it's interesting. I think it'd be good to compare to what other spaces are available. I don't know them all exhaustively. 
you know, between Ben's friend and uh, the Weed the Museum. We know. We know that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Know I think it's important for that sort of space. So. People, there are not a lot of spaces where people do these larger gatherings. And you don't see, like, to your point, so you don't see a lot of support for that. It's until you need to do the graduation, you don't care. That's not a space you need. So there's not like a group support of such a thing. We know that those spaces are in kind of man. Okay. I'm not saying you should or shouldn't, but I'm just telling you our experience right now is that those spaces are in kind of man. They don't take yeah. polarized voters either. Voters vote on the quiet. I do think that, I mean, you're gonna have to think really carefully about how you communicate about that and you know what you call it. And maybe the idea of, is this a recreational you know, because then you're saying like we're intentionally creating a community space versus like this is a recreation center with a bunch of open space everyone all likes there. You know, so I think it's like how you communicate about this is gonna be really important and you know, think about do you have a constituency that's really gonna support that because you don't want it to be a detraction for the big recreation community because they don't understand it and they don't vote for it because they don't see it as recreation. So well, one thing with less, the less ballot was not, we heard a lot of feedback from people saying, why well, don't use rec, why don't I vote for this? I think community does broaden that quite a bit. Same. There were several comment cards, you know, and, I, and we have to assess all of it. There were some comments, not that they were majority, but that did say, you know, please don't forget those other general community uses, that this is still a community center. So I think. The name. question is fundamentally, is it a community recreation center? Answer that question that first, right? and then we can answer the question about how much. Yeah. Right. Same. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Lord, I just wanted to mention that, you know, your whole rec guide has all those programs that you're talking about, what you're putting in there. Yeah. If I'm in charge of the, uh, the factual summary, which I think I am, um, you know, I, I would put all those in there. Like, yes. this is what this space is for. Yeah. Because, I mean, your example of Basket Weaving is lovely, but you're probably not the top vote getter. You might only choose to vote. <laughs> no, <laughs> but it's always yeah. full. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's full. I'm just saying, yeah. all those ones that are yeah. your yeah. top yeah. programming yeah. folks, you know, I know that you're, you know, you're not thinking about it because you don't have the guide in front of you, but there are hundreds and hundreds of rec classes yeah. that would be held in those spaces, and we need to make sure that we get granular around what that is. And I, and I think that's important. It's the big community event. To me, yeah, I would agree. probably more nebulous than what we said. I, I find it hard to believe you couldn't fill classrooms with programming, but they're tiny, those are tiny and they're not expensive. That big event hall is the space that you really have to want, lean into it or don't. Yeah, I agree with that. There's enough stuff that's going to get thrown into this barn that they'll find a home for it somewhere. Do you know how the feedback's like for that message? What's that? It's not going out. Yeah, it's not. Good okay, question, Brian. Just as a naming thing, do you know how Apex got its name? Like how Carvana is it? I don't know. It's like a trick question. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. I just how the I, district got its name? Yeah, how they decided to call it Apex. I'm guessing it's Arvada Parks yeah. and something. Yeah, and exercise. Yeah. It's yeah. Name, but I don't know. Okay. I don't know. It's just in, in this recreation and community yeah. discussion. Sounds like a perfect job for a political action committee. Yeah, I will just say I really feel that the classrooms are different than that big community yeah. space. Yep, they're they're really meeting different needs, and I would give up the meeting space before the classroom. That's for sure. Well, looking at the drawings you had that you explained were for the Fort Collins folks. They had an obvious big pool that looked like a pool, and then there was this nebulous, you know, others. And so that's the opposite of what we just saw, where there was a circle, the Venn diagram kind of shape, yeah. had names on each of these things and areas that we find out aren't really representative of the actual area. So the more accurate yeah, drawing yeah, might the problem with those have avoided half of state. our conversation. Yeah, I think it's also just an explanation because, you know, you were just talking about like being really clear what this represents so that people don't make it up you know they right. can see themselves in the thing that they care about in the description well, the long one you did four years ago 
had a huge pool and a huge, and then there was that stuff in between, which, which was some, direct center. which was the rec center. Yeah. But you know, if that's again what you're gonna, it, the things for our group at the discussion we get, we're worried about gyms and pools and fitness space, and the other just kind of slides in on the edge. That's right. That's I right. mean, Fair it's enough. you know, yeah. I mean, it, it's whatever this community space. Has, it's just one of those rooms up in the corner. Right. I mean, you don't have to label it as such or put you know, ballroom dancing going on or anything like that. Well, that, that, that diagram showed everything from storage to, you know, right. viewing it was everything. And to this point, we're, we're, uh, we're uh, being a little presumptuous. We're stepping a little ahead of, we're a little ahead of our students here. That's the only, like, those diagrams are representative of a program that we haven't confirmed yet. We're still waiting for some survey data, some open house. So okay. I, I feel like you're yeah. seeing a little bit of the work in progress. I, I will say that it'd be helpful if it was a little more proportionate. I think at some point it probably started out very proportional. Um, but be aware that once we kind of lock in on that program, the drawings and diagrams become very accurate. Because we know exactly what we're proposing and building. And at this point, we're still kind of anticipating what, what the final community Do you expect the city council to have the same discussion? I want more square footage for this than that. Is that what city councils do? Oh, we'll probably give them a fairly similar presentation of the process, the feedback, the site concept. The building will have a plan, much like I showed you, with an actual kind of area designate to it. And then we'll probably ask them for that feedback about does this, do you feel like what we've shown you represents the feedback that we communicated? That'd be the goal. This feels different than the last time, is why I asked. Nice. Four years ago, in 19, it was very nebulous. We wanted X amount of money, and we're going to build a Pool and a nice. I mean, it, it, there was since the drawings weren't yet done. I don't recall there <coughs> ever being a negotiation about how much space each thing should have. Am well, I just uh, not remembering? Process. No, the the process. The pro, part of the problem with nineteen was a lot of that work was done as early as late fifteen, early sixteen. Yeah, I remember that's when yeah. we talked. Yeah, they yes. just said, "Hey, we got to go to the election and right. get some drawings together." Yeah, and. And really the driving force from council at that time was 50 meter pool and, and the ice. The other things were nice fees, but weren't really what it was okay. about. So, so which do you was a mess. that right. the council, like when you go to council, will, they will at that point tell you whether or not the library should be included here in the concept? Yeah, but I, at that point, it's too late to do more than what Chris just represented. It can, it will, can have a placeholder, but it, it we're not going to really get into mingled or no, not mingled, if, if that makes sense. That would come later on, after the election. Well, I think that's probably going to be probably not it. I mean, if you have a way, because if it's going to be on the ballot as like recreation and community center that includes a library, like then you're going to have the library people voting for that because their thing is in there. I mean, I think it matters. It, it, it does. What we were just concerned about was trying to communicate something to the public without explanation. So it's, I mean, I think our, yeah. our goal, our, our direction, or not a direction, our, our thought was show the library as part of the complex but not get into the weeds as to how how much it how much or how little it integrates because that feels like it's too complicated to convey in a general election as opposed to this is the site, this is the community rec center, this is the library. But they still have to decide, right, whether they want to move forward with library as part of whatever goes to the ballot. Yes. And if they say yes, then will they tell you if they want it to be co-located in some way on the site or somewhere else? Possibly. I encourage them. To it, there, <laughs> my hesitation is there's a lot going on right now. Yeah. Some of it we can't talk about. So I'll just leave it at that. Mm -hmm. But I was just going to add that what happens if one passes and the other yeah. doesn't. And so I think what they yeah. want to see is what this looks like with, I mean, I think their preference is the rec center. And library passes, library annex inside the rec center. I mean, I think that's their preference. But 
But that being said, library will be a separate question. Mm -hmm. And so you'll have to be ready either way. So if library fails and rec center passes, then you don't have a library and it's on there anymore. Yeah. And so it just needs to be flexible. If you throw it in one that big community building, could you do both on the same ballot issue? Mm, it's a good question. We've asked our legal folks about it, and oh, what they're yeah, concerned good. about is log rolling. Is what right, right. No, I've heard all this. Yeah. But if it, on your it's center page, if it's a community center, then you can put anything you want in there, right? It's for the community. I mean, that would be my interpretation. Um, would, that, would that allow for a bigger square footage? Like, I guess it is that. No. No. Mm -hmm. Right. So we have to. Well, you're going to be limited by dollars in some yeah, sense. Yeah. yeah. We're looking at. You know, ninety plus thousand for the rec center, and somewhere between twenty and thirty square thousand square feet for the library. Um, probably closer to twenty. So. Um. But yeah, I, I council will have to decide it. if, if you know the if the voters want a branch library, not a rec center, is this still the right place to go? And challenge is there. It, where a lot of folks want up in Northwest Longmont, we just don't have the space to, to do it up there. We don't we don't own any land. Do do you get the sense that and this is something that our study we, we were trying to figure out how we would tease this out or survey it, but the sense that some of the site um, reaction is limited to folks that live kind of in and around that park and use it regularly, or is it a sense of to everybody, the other 70,000 plus residents. That's, that's a real question. My, my guess is that, yeah, the, the people that are most local are probably from that area. But I don't have anything. Yet. But we don't have any, yeah, it's all anecdotal. Yeah. You mean vocal yeah. against Proponent. this site or in favor of another site? No, against this site. The one that's back at it's on the screen. Oh, it's it's in, the, this is good it's for you to hear, Sandy. The site is the biggest challenge we're hearing. And uh, and no site was the biggest challenge. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I can't yeah. do that. Yeah. That's yeah. an absolute yeah. principle. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, it may be people that are like very proximate because I live probably less than a mile from this site, and I, I mean, I see challenges. Like I said, if you don't address the parking and the, you know, access, then it's not going to work. But otherwise, I think it's a good site, and I would be in favor of it. And I, you know, but I don't live right next to it. I've heard, I've heard my less kids reaction to... My kid to, goes to that school. And it's near the school. That's your captive audience, too. Yeah. So, I mean, I think I've heard more reaction to the micro issues on the site about wildlife and traffic than I have. Why isn't it on the east end of town or why isn't it in the north? I think mm -hmm. the, the focus has been the site issues less than the gap analysis of the community, I guess. And, and kind of what we've talked about is we need to be prepared to respond how we're going to respond to those issues absolutely yeah. absolutely so are you guys yeah, and this may is probably not a question for you chris but all right i mean i feel like it's going to part of my questions are because i'm really afraid of what happens if this doesn't pass and the community continues to not have access to a resource that we've desperately needed for a long time is the city council thinking about like and have to figure out another way to pay for the rec center or be able to, you know, the quality of life and value of the community is going to, I think, be impacted if we can't provide these kinds of facilities. I would agree, but I don't know that if there were other ways to finance a rec center, we'd be working well, in that they direction. Find other ways to I'm sorry? They find other ways to finance other things. I mean, maybe there are public private partnerships they should be exploring that are like, different than what's being considered here. I just don't want to, if like all the eggs are in this basket and it doesn't pass, then what? I think the council will take that as public directive. The, the real question is, is play too much? much So, yeah. by, by age 51, 
yeah. 50 plus one. We have quite a bit to, to talk about. <coughs> so, right time to move to the next thing. Okay. That's great. Thank you all. Thank you. Thanks Thanks you. Thanks Thanks you. Thanks Thanks you. This was very helpful. Um, we're excited to get to the next step, so thanks for the time. Okay. I'd be happy to send this presentation. Yes. Oh, what, what's the details for what we're going to do there? Uh, it's well, almost like a national last year. It's station. It's, station. it's, it's not it's hot seat. seat. Oh, it's near the uh, Rail Center, 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 Rail Road, okay. Longmont, Rec Center okay. at 6, 6, 6 p.m., 6 to 8. Fun. Yeah, that's you bet. But there's no space to do it there, is lobby. We're doing it in the lobby. The big giant lobby. It's outside. It's outside the tents. We're doing it on the tents. Ah, nice. Yeah, that's great. 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 Yeah, Continuing with old business, we'll go back to the Library of Creation and Culture tax update. Sandy, are you first, or do you have an intro? No, I, I will actually give you a really quick uh -huh. intro because I kind of got, I got in the middle. I want to give Sandy a little bit of room on this if we don't hit it quite right. But we were trying to, Jeff might talk about what we heard in this group, group from in this room, but also at our retreat. And part of that was in the last go around, trying to drive people to the right information on the website was frustrating, like they said, a heads up, there might be some constructive criticism on how a website can provide things better and get people that information, but trying to move people to our information. The other side of that was, if we're gonna have conversations with people, what can we say, how much can we say, when is that transition from staff supporting us? So I think those are the kind of two pieces I kind of brought Sandy in to talk about, kind of the city's messaging on the website, how people do a better job with it, and then, how this board and staff reacts and go forward under some of the, the legal requirements we have. And I'm sure that seem. Yeah, that sounds good. Okay. Do you think we could start with the second that would be it. item? Exactly. Is anything you can't prepare for? I'm First. prepared for it all. Okay, great. Thank you. My big listening Sweet. ears on and my legal brief. <laughs> <laughs> Should I yeah, come please. over there? Okay. Yeah, sure. And I brought with me my friend Erica. Um, well, I think attends this meeting pretty regularly, right? Oh, yeah. It's been a while. Yeah. It's been a while. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Very good. Erica is a communications manager at the communications division. Okay, well, hello. Hi. Thanks for letting me join you today. My name is Sandy T. I'm assistant city manager with Shared Services. Uh, what that means is all the internal stuff, including communications and clerks and legislation and all that kind of stuff, um, is my general area. I also work a lot with the council, and I worked a lot with this project, so I apologize for piping up, um, but I certainly want these things to pass as well. I actually work for Jeff as a deep water aerobics instructor, also, oh, one day wow. a week, <laughs> and they do love it. I'm surprised it came up like that. Like, not just water fitness, but deep water well, aerobics. They were, they were at that open <laughs> house last week. Like, oh, my gosh. They're 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 yes. Yeah. Yeah. They want to oh. be there. And they, they are passionate, and yes, they, they are, are sort of done with the lap folks, too. So I can see where they want even more space as well. So, yes, I certainly have a deep passion for all of these projects that we're taking a look at. Um, you know, you had asked the question, so the second one is the how, what's the involvement of the board, right? Okay. There, there are a couple kind of bright lines as far as time frame when it comes to elections, both for city employees and for boards and commissions. Because you are a board and commission member, there is no reason why you can't speak up about different issues, but you have to identify them as, as an individual person when you do those kinds of things. Because when you're working with the staff um, in the capacity of a city, either official, which you are, um, or city staff, which we are, anytime that you're in that kind of a situation, once ballot measures have been set, then we are not allowed to spend any public money on that or advocate for or against those things in our city yeah, jobs. Yeah. Um, so, for example, if, if you're probably not the city manager or assistant city manager, but if you're somebody else in the organization and you'd like to just speak as a member of the public, you're welcome to do that, just as you are able to do that on a board of commission. But those of us speaking in our titles, in your titles, that's where things get to be a little funky. So let me give you some time frame. At this point, Everything's up in the air. People are talking, we're debating, we're discussing, all those things are totally fine. You're welcome to say anything you like, you love it, you hate it, you want it, you need it, whatever it looks like, you're welcome to talk about all those things. Staff is able to give their professional opinions all the way through. 
until the moment of ballot, ballot setting. Ballot setting is the second reading for us of a ballot title. That usually happens in August. First readings are usually the first meeting of a month, um, of that month, and then second readings are the second meeting of that month. So once that ballot title is set in August, now we have to put on our um, election clothes, so to speak. Uh, and what that looks like is that you as a board, as the city council as a board, can take advocacy uh, for or against ballot measures. You're welcome to do that. We can then advertise those um, group decisions from a board, either from you or from the city council. And that's as far as our advocacy or just advocacy. I don't know how it would work if you're against it. <laughs> Your advocacy or the other way. Um, that's, that's as far as we can spend any city money, tax money, time um, on it at that point. Is that a resolution you're saying? Like a resolution, okay. yeah. So the city council uh, usually directs me, after they set a ballot, to bring them back a resolution of support. I do so, and we publish that in the city line. The reason we're able to do that is because city line is the customary way that we get information out to our residents. So because we do it all the time, and we do it every single month, we are allowed to publish a resolution of support in city line. Can we, as a board, if we take a position in favor of ballot, Measure. Can we write like a letter to the editor that's signed by the board about yes. that? Yes, you can. If you signed it as a board, then you're welcome to distribute that position any way that you would like. Where it gets a little funky is is we probably can't have you put that on. Ask Erica to put that on the city social media, right? Because now we're talking about Erica's city time and social media time. Guess <laughs> it's free. <laughs> But yeah, and so you know, we can't at that point in time, once that, se that second reading happens of the ballot issues, then we no longer can you know, really speak to it for or against. All we are allowed to provide at that point are factual summaries to the residents, which we, which we do. We then usually put together that brochure um, that people will get as a direct mail, but it's very, it has to be very factual. And I think what happened in 2019, and I do think we have different attorney interpretation this time, but because the drawings that your consultant show you, showed you were not introduced in a public meeting prior to ballot setting, I think the attorney's office deemed that was considered advocacy because it wasn't part of the public domain prior to ballot setting. So that August date is really, really important because we can strategize and talk about it and talk about you know what should the name of it be and how should we make sure that we get the vote and how do we really advocate for it. And once that August timeline hits, these guys can't talk about it with you like that anymore. They have to be able to provide only factual summaries. They can answer your questions, but they're not able to really advocate for or against at that point. Does that make sense in general? Question. Yeah. Uh, the second reading, is that just the ballot title or is it the text as well? It's it's the whole, it's the text and everything. Oh, the reading of the ballot, basically. Yes. Oh, I don't know. Yeah. So that'll be set at that point. At that point, it's set. And yeah. then um, that's when our regulations all really jump in. Where we can't use any more city time, city money, city advertising, we can't do any of those kinds of things. Now, until that happens, if this board ends up discussing, you know, an action group that wants to, you know, either come out for this, if that's what ends up happening, you'd like to organize uh, residents to do so, you're welcome to do that. Once we hit August, <laughs> then we can't even discuss that in this meeting room because now you're a board, you're in a, a an official, a city official, and at this point, it really is just those resolutions of support. And I think it really changes what things look like. For us, the more information that you get out there publicly, that's why I'm hoping that your consultant is coming on the 11th, right? He's yes. going to present. Yeah. Because the more you get those pictures out, the more you get those maps out, that's public domain. Now we can do the public domain, we do factual summaries. Does that make some sense? So the flashier pictures you got out there, that's better for us. Uh, ahead of the August time frame um, because we can include those in, in the information. And I do think that was pretty rough in 2019. To show a rec center, just my opinion, everyone has their opinion on what happened. My opinion is to show a rec center that has no place and has no pictures is not something most people are going to vote for because it's just not enough certainty. People want to know what it is that they're going to get for their money. And so the more certainty that you can have, I mean, you're right about that meeting space, even if you call it something different. I mean, as, you want to be as clear as possible with how you're laying out some of these things because once that uh, the ballot titles are set, then there's no, there's not a lot of you know, discussion that can come afterward. 
Um, another question, this is probably me being a little, a little naive about it. When, when is the text that goes into the blue book around the ballot built out? So like the descriptive text that contributes to that? So municipal ballot elections are not included in the blue book. Okay, so, so there's nothing like that? Nothing like that. If it's a Tabor um, you know, piece, which this will be, yeah. there will be a Tabor comment that can happen. This is an opportunity that a lot of people miss, is that anybody from the public can make a comment for the Tabor book if they read the Tabor statements that do go out and they're not blue. They're like a little gray mm -hmm. that comes from the county. Um, and it doesn't matter if they're factual or not. So anybody can say it. You just kind of you, you type up whatever it is that you want to tell voters about this particular piece, whether it's factual or not, um, which can be super dangerous. <laughs> you can have people say anything they like with, with one that's Tabor. Tabor means that there's a tax associated with it, taxpayers' bill of rights. So once there's a tax associated with this one, there certainly will be, then we'll have to put out a Tabor notice. Tabor notices have an open comment period. Anybody can comment during that period. So that's a great opportunity yep. you know, to be able to put your comments in, but it's also something that can be a little dangerous. The, the clerk's office posts all that on their website. Didn't we do a... A factual sheet that was mailed out to people? Yes, we do a factual summary every year on these ballot issues once the titles are set so we know what they are. Um, and we try, and we run that all by the attorney's office, um, but we try to just say, here's how much money this is, this is what this means for you, and this is what you would get. You know, So the more information that you have out in the public domain before that, the more information we can share with the public. We also are required to put together pro and con statements that are not only equal in number, but equal in size on the brochure. I mean, that's how factual we have to do it. Um, if we had more pros than cons, our attorneys would say, no, that's not that's not a fair assessment. We need to have the same space, the same numbers um, on both sides of the ledger. So that's question. Yes, there's, there's the brochure you mentioned. Mm -hmm. This statement that the mail may or may not go out, it's still factual. Mm -hmm. Is there a city webpage about the initiative? We usually take the inf same information. So the way I like to do it, which doesn't, doesn't always go this way, but the way I like to do it is to create all the factual information once and then publish it in a mailer that goes to everybody, the same exact information on the webpage, the same exact information that goes out on social media. Okay. Because then that way there's no, like this is the approved text approved by our attorney's office. Yeah, for well, one thing I think is compelling about this initiative that we were very supportive of is it's not something that was thought of this year. Mm -hmm. it's, the, it's the result of 15 years of planning and awareness for the last initiative. Is there a place that can be kind of written up as a narrative that makes the argument in favor of an, an initiative going to the public mm -hmm. prior to the reading of the ballot? So you can have an existing piece of website material that is supportive of the general idea of this being part of a long narrative Absolutely do that. If you wanted to put out editorials ahead of the ballot, ballot set, I mean, you I mean, can do that. It gets a little rough. So, yes, technically could we? Yes. Would we? Probably not. And okay. the reason we wouldn't is because even though that line is drawn in August, part of the reason people vote for city things is because they trust the city. And so if, we feel, if it feels like we're advocating for something ahead of time, um, sometimes that can erode public trust. Mm. So I'm, I'm real careful. I, I try really, I mean, we've, we've done it. We've certainly done it during the last, you know, the last sale taxes on the streets. We, you know, we had folks that contacted groups, hey, do you want us to come and speak to you before ballot said? I don't feel great about that usually. And so, um, you know, under my direction, we kind of stopped that and really just said, hey, we're going to be factual. We're always going to be factual. That's the role of city government. Mm -hmm. Now, if people ask questions like that and say, hey, how long has this been? Considered that we can certainly publish FAQs like that. Mm -hmm. um, I, I guess my, my feedback would be encouraging us to be including that history as factual things that have happened. That this mm -hmm. has been discussed and planned for a long time. There's been a lot of public comment. There's been a lot of chances to get involved in it, and it's not something that was thought of this year. That's all factual. And there's a way to include that. I appreciate that. Well, it'll also be a great letter to the editor. However, also Times yeah. Call is not exactly. To everybody. We can also do that for sure. So, I, I've read that letter too, but I think the city, it's important the city is bringing information right. that shows this is part of a longer story. Right. Because I it is. That would be helpful for us. I can understand certainly the longer story portion of it. Um, well, especially feedback from the last election. This is not the same. Yeah. We changed because of all of, you know, it, you that, go, that, to add to your yeah. story. Yeah, that gets into, I think, the, the opinion piece. Like, we heard, we heard you, we changed it based on this. That's a little less factual, but something like right. this. Okay. Valuable. 
didn't, uh, sorry, uh, quick question. Did we jump go back to asking more questions in the survey? No, we, no. we didn't. We, did we didn't have one. anything different to ask them at this point. So the council took, you know, from however many, you know, seven or eight different projects and narrowed it down to four. But they didn't change the way that they were presented, so Magellan Poland basically holds is the same thing. Do they now, if they did something like combined library and rec center and said this is a community center, that's something we might want to pull on again, although our time is um, can you get deeper data? Is that available? It's all, it's all online. The whole Magellan, everything, it's like a sixty page report is all, oh, okay. all online under that council. Because there is like mm -hmm. within the demographics. So yep, you can see the demographics. You can see which demographics said which thing. Um, we asked them to rerun it if we were to do it in a presidential election year, and they felt like what would pull better is the park, um, which which then ended up cutting this last round from council conversation. But what would have probably pulled better, they thought, in an election year as opposed to an off year, um, was was parks and maybe union. They didn't feel like there was a significant change based on a presidential election, more turnout. So are you guys, you know, there was the request to go for staff to go back and think about the all the recreation pieces and sort of what a package, when do you have to bring that back to I think, council? I guess what we're bringing back on the 11th, right? So I think what we're saying is that here's some changed conditions. Um, and what council directed us, like I said, was four, rec center, library, uh, performing arts center, and this YMCA swap idea. They may not be right, but we're going we're gonna to find out in the next probably two weeks, you know, whether any of these are actually right to actually happen if somebody did vote it in. Um, and that'll be information that's also presented on the 11th. But we did not, we did not combine any other projects, we basically just left projects off based on so directly park, uh, Union mm -hmm. Reservoir, we decided to move the, more the towards funding. water, water storage, um, and then enhancing that through water storage and using them. We did receive a grant. I think we're finding that money doesn't go as far as it used to, but <laughs> they received a grant. Um, I think what was interesting about the polling is that the Centennial Pool call out uh, ended up being well, a much bigger, the, right. yeah, it was bigger a, thing. The confusion over what was going to happen with Centennial, Centennial Pool, I think, was. The problematic piece in the polling. So we, we didn't do any additional polling. Most of the polling came back, as you know, 53, 55 percent as yes. And I recognize what um, the consultant is saying. Our consultants say if it doesn't pull 60 percent, it's probably not going to pass. Which the library did. But that was the only thing that well, barely made 60 percent with the unscientific survey. <laughs> Any other questions? Is it clearer around what you can do and when? Like right now, kind of wild west, but once we hit that August date, then we're really, really restricted. And we want to make sure that we are paying very close attention to earning that public trust all the way in front of patients. They have to know when they get this brochure for the information that's inside. So I think that's just page readers to ask for the July if you're into it is just for the agenda and July is meeting. Talk about being clear what we can and can't do in September because the August meeting is too close to the meeting, I think. Sorry, I'm going to be right once already, maybe. Not twice. Yeah. I think September or October is a good time to make a resolution. Mm -hmm. And we just talk, talk about things like writing a letter to the editor and we all sign. I think we can't talk about that, though, in the meeting. Correct. Right. So we need to plan beforehand what we're going to do that's not allowed to do later. That's what he said, July. Yeah. <laughs> so I will not be at the July meeting. I'll be here. Oh boy. John the Dice will play. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is that helpful information? Mm -hmm. oh, yes. Okay. Yeah. I, I have another quick question if you don't mind. Um, what, what, are there things that we're missing that a PAC should know talking to the city or getting resources from the city or that the city would want the PAC to know to advocate on its behalf for things? I, I just, mm -hmm. It's just a weird sort of relationship. It doesn't show up that often. And, you know, there are things that are not quite public all the time and things that, you know, don't get up. So it's just... It's pretty so, rare, so, I think. So, but, yeah, yeah I've, you know, that's a great question, right? What you don't know what you don't know. 
Yeah. What I will tell you is that uh, the first time that we tried to pass the next slide, the ability to provide broadband to the residents, it failed because there was a huge campaign against it. Um, and the next time, it was a small political action committee. It was a small group of residents that got together and told all their friends and told all their friends. And I believe that that's what made it pass the second time. I would never underestimate your ability to organize people in order to get something done. This town is completely built on that. This is this is part of our brand. Um, it is actually what it is to live in Longmont. So I would say, don't underestimate your own power in organizing your neighborhoods, your friends, your uh, kids' schools, whatever, whatever it is. <laughs> as far as city resources, we can provide all the brochures that you need. Um, we can certainly publish any resolutions that you make. And that's kind of it. We can come talk to groups. We can come and talk yes. to groups um, if we are invited. Yeah. That's a good one, Jeff. That's yeah. a good one. Yeah. And we're we're we are okay. able to come and give factual summary and answer all kinds of questions um, if we are invited. <laughs> like vampires. <laughs> <laughs> like vampires. Exactly. <laughs> <That is funny. laughs> But yeah, I would, I would never underestimate a public opinion. Yeah. I, I think my ask is to have one place as a website where we have all this tell me info. Mm -hmm. So like the survey results from Magellan, I want that on the same website as everything else about this initiative, if possible, because there's so many different places you can get different access to stuff, including the next topic. But um, that would be helpful for all of us to be able to, in our private capacity, point people to a single place that lays it out, it's not a brochure. Yeah, so, uh, I think we would get ruled against that on the website because I think it would look like advocacy. Just facts. Wait, information? I mean, I certainly understand that. And we can take a look at more specifically what you're talking about. Yeah. But if you're trying to build the case, showing the polls, showing the yeses, my guess is that I'm going to get whacked out. I don't mean that. Just the people are interested in looking at the polls. Right now, mm -hmm. you have to go look at some yep. drop down menu on a former agenda for yep. a city council meeting that I can never find. Mm -hmm. So, I'd love to, particularly in July, if you wanted to give me a list of what that looks like for you, kind of an outline of, hey, this page would look like this, and okay. it would have this, and it would show these things. Um, you know, that's something that would maybe be okay. together. Yeah. Yeah, it gets, it gets a little tough, because on the city's website, when you talk about elections, we have election page, right? The election page is, is brought to you by the city clerk, and we will never fix that with anything that looks like Anything else? This is this is where you go to find out how to register to vote, how to register to become a candidate, who the candidates are, what are their campaign sheets, what does that look like? Then we have a tie over to the ballot issues, and the ballot issues are flashy, and we have some video and have the you know the text that we just talked about that's part of the um, pro con kind of thing, and we have had problems linking those before, so I think this year we have a better plan. Erica, do you remember that? You may not have been part of that conversation, but we used to never go from clerk to ballot issues, and now I think we've agreed that we will. Um, you know, at least have some connection there because when you're looking up elections, you'll never see the ballot issues if you're looking on the clerk's page right now because all you see is the elected officials. So I think we've worked out some of that. Plus, I think last year, last time, we certainly had some duplicate pages because we had different ballot issues. Oh. So everybody did their own web page for their own ballot issue, and we will not do that again, ever again. <laughs> because then it doesn't give voters the full picture. Right. And is that also, does that play into the advocacy issue of like each page has its own graphics? So then no. it just doesn't look oh. right. Oh. So if you looked last time and you were like, oh, there's a water bond issue, mm -hmm. and then you get your ballot and you find four ballot issues, you're yeah. going to be like, well, what the heck? I thought I was getting all the we will be putting it together. It will be much more consistent this year. It will be single single pages so that people can find it. We will have them on the home page. That whole period of time. So that's a couple things that we recognize we needed to improve. All right. You can have a pack that's going to oh, yeah, yeah. create your own. For sure, for sure. Yeah. 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 That's right. Um, okay, I was just should we move that. to the... Yeah, I'd say we kind of jumped in here, but yeah. we can go back and forth too. Yeah, sure. Whatever. Yeah, so, yeah, so if you give me kind of, this is what this might look like, then I can at least consider that, you know, because 
city council is rolling decisions as we go. And the first presentation isn't relevant to the last presentation always. Right? The first presentation is so you're going to see dollars that are no longer relevant at the next presentation. So we want to be really careful. Council pages and council minutes are the rolling dialogue of these conversations. And then when something is finalized, that's when we put it up on the web. So to show that history can be kind of tough, it's not that we haven't done that before, um, particularly like the resilient St. Bernie project. Mm -hmm. You know, we want to remind people there was a flood 10 years ago. That's mm -hmm. a fact, and that's what put us here. <laughs> but, mm -hmm. you know, we, don't, we, we tried really hard not to pull on heartstrings, but we still can show pictures of flood water. Great. Thank you. So I think the other portion of this is if we have any other feedback, could be related or to this initiative or other um, finding other information. We talked a lot about how it is easy or not easy to find with all the recreation and parks and open space related materials and um, had some discussion about maybe how to, how to simplify that and maybe like have more searchable features where you could have like a map with all the you know parks and things located where you could collect and find out about that map. But I don't know how it is. We talked about some of this at our retreat. So if there are any things that people want to suggest. I wasn't there, so no, but no, okay. the, the map yeah. thing was a big, uh, a big item. Is that is that something that can be done? Well, the way that the website is set up is right now we have a facilities module. Now, I should caveat all of this by saying that we are in the middle of a web redesign project. So what I would tell you is that maybe some of these things are not super easy today, but knowing kind of that vision for what you might want to see tomorrow is something then that we can include as part of our web redesign because I love the idea of being able to have an interactive map. Our current website, the way that it works is it's a facilities directory, and so you have all the facilities in the directory, and then the directory ties to different pages. So when you're on the Rec Center page, you can go back to the facilities page and you get the list of all the facilities, Rec Center, you know, Memorial Building, all the parks, those kinds of things. But it's set up like a web, so that the facilities are in one place and then you web out to individual pages. But I'd, I'd love to get those ideas for usability on, on what to do when we are getting ready to do our redesign. And I think that I my skirt around that has been uh, interactive Google Maps. And so there is one underneath of slash recs locations. We do have a pinned map of various recreation owned facilities and things that are kind of color coded. The issue that we may run into at this particular moment in time is accessibility. So we are struggling with a 10-year-old website to meet ADA standards and what we had standards, which is part of this next iteration of the website. So if you don't see it now, to Sandy's point, I would love that feedback. I would love to hear all of those pain points as we get ready to send out a request for proposals for a website vendor, probably within the next few weeks, um, so that we can start gathering some of that usability data and seeing how we can dovetail that with the accessibility concern. So you're not going to hurt our feelings. We know it's time for a change. Give it to us. And it's worry. my special field. So yes. it's my special interest. So I'm always happy to make things as easy as possible on the web for yes. folks. That's absolutely our goal. So yeah, absolutely. I have two, I think two areas of comments. Um, the quicker one is a good example of something that doesn't work well for me today. Is not parks and rec related, but is the uh, active development blog. The, the like the planning and zoning active development blog. Mm -hmm. There's a map. There's also a PDF of a spreadsheet. And in the map, tiny spreadsheet. <laughs> and in the map, if you want to get documents and details about a specific thing that is happening in a place, you know something's happening, but it's nearly impossible to find documents for that. So I think. In general, the way, in my experience, people think about either developments or parks or facilities is there's a place and a thing, and there's information about that. And there's a lot of nuance in the city world about what happened during city council, what is a you know, draft review plan, what is a, a final review plan, or a plat site plan, these things that have nuance that is less relevant to the public. So a place to find everything about a certain site is the main, I think, focus. And, and I think getting back to Parks and Rec, for me, the rec stuff is largely very accessible, in my opinion. 
it's really mostly that we talk about things in this meeting on open space and parks. And it's pretty hard to get an idea of where these things are, what is happening there now, and what is planned in the future for these different sites. Mm -hmm. And part of that I think is that most of the staff is very fluent in the naming and terminology. But my experience joining this board six months ago was that things like the difference between a park renewal and a new park build are largely irrelevant to the public. Or a, you know, this phase 12 of the Greenway, we all think of it as just the Greenway. And I think there's, my, my, my passion for this is that there's so much cool stuff being planned for the public that people should know about, and it's pretty hard to find it. Mm -hmm. So I'm a big cyclist, and I was really psyched to hear about the, whatever is phase 13, the east end of the Greenway projects. Mm -hmm. And you know, I asked Steve, you know, is there a map of that location? He said, oh yeah, it's in the master plan. I'm like, well, where do I go find this like tiny little map with a red line saying where it's gonna go? There's a lot of challenge, I think, with being too specific, right? Because you're then in the design phase to look at those things. But I, I think we sometimes are too conservative in reading things in a document that you might find a way to, mm -hmm. rather than being like, here's the whole greenway. We have incredible plans to both fill in the part that's closed right now and extend both directions. It's going to be freaking awesome. We can say that on the website and just and just show those things. And right now, it's not trumpeting that. It's like if you know to look for the Nemo Gallo Park site about what's being built, you'll get there. But I never heard about that until Steve told us about it. Mm -hmm. that, that's my thought on this. I do know that Harold is very interested in doing some enhanced capital improvement program um, information, communications, and information. Because we have a lot of things out there, people are like, well, when's that going to happen? I don't know. When's that going to happen? I don't know. You know. So I think he's interested in more reporting, and, and these kinds yeah. of things would be a good to get to see out there. I think it's okay to say, we don't know, and it would need funding, and there's not that much funding out there. And that's, but if you're interested in this, or you want to support this, here's more information about it, or how to get involved. And to your point, we have a lot of things that are happening. Yeah. <laughs> that are happening right now. Yeah. So. interactive maps that tell us more things. Yeah, I've, I've, I keep the active development log up all the time because I don't work uh, mm -hmm. in external services. That's the first question I always get in a public meeting is, hey, what's going on over there next to the old Taco Bell down there? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But pretty much all you can find out is the name. <laughs> and, the, and the docket number for yeah. whatever it is, and yeah. maybe the link or not, but yeah. Um, I don't have cards, but I put my email on the board, so um, you're all welcome to email me or do a website walkthrough or anything like that. I'm always happy to entertain. And I love to hear about the recreation accessibility because I'm pretty sure that's 100% your account. <laughs> <laughs> because it didn't used to be. <laughs> well, it's a, it's, a, it's a much more interactive part of the site, right? You yeah. have a login, you have classes set up for the team, and it's a lot more than Parks has, but it, it's got a lot of focus, clearly. Yeah, we'll get there. We had a lot on our list earlier in the morning, yeah. <laughs> so we may have to revisit that and get back to you. But I guess one Absolutely. other one other thing that came cropped out of the retreat sort of element was that we, or not we, I as a citizen decided to pull up and jump onto some AI just to see if it could pull some information, mm -hmm. and it was one of I managed to make it do it with other things as well, but. A few times it cropped back with, ah, I don't really have a clear answer. <laughs> yeah. And, and that was, yeah, and that was one that, that was one thing yeah. that was hard. And yeah. we're over, I passed the phone around, we're like, yeah, look, look, it says it doesn't, it can't find. That it's also a recent point that a lot of, oh, I'm in banking, a lot of big banks right now, we're trying to figure out how to bet integrate so that we, if someone wants to search something up about. Give me every single rate in this day I got, and it, it gives me everything that it, it possibly can. Mm -hmm. That we're one of those sites that shows up as, as a, a point of data. That's terrifying that chat GPT can't find. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I might have had like three point five or something. Mind. I don't know if I had the best one, <laughs> but yeah, it was yeah, it was something we passed around the room on. Yeah, just on my phone. Yeah. Oh really? Yeah. Oh, that's good to know. It's going to be AI completely in a dirt lake. <laughs> I had, it. Right. So I had it write me a poem about yeah. it might be giants the other day, and it did a great job. So I'm surprised <laughs> I can't find anything about yes. it works. <laughs> Just because no one else can really see it, I will share with Sandy. At the retreat, I had that map of all the projects, and it kind of showed where they're all at. I thought people thought it was great to see we could sell you know, geographically, but also the idea of that interactive piece that 
if you hovered over the rec center, you start seeing what you get. If you hovered over Union, you'd see what you get. If you hovered over St. Rain 13, you'd get some idea what it was. So I think that geospatial with some information as information changes, if we could add that things with us. Yeah. We had a lot of conversation about sort of interactive spatial mm -hmm. displays as a way to. So if you don't mind, I'll share that with Sandy a little bit. The map we have, we also some stuff that staff is doing for us on some of our map layers. Can we do that map because yes. I know that I included with my council yep. comment. Very. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I, yeah. said, I said before, but I'm very happy to help with that stuff. I work, I work for Esri and I do mapping and interactive stuff. So as a citizen, like, I'd be happy to help with that. Right. Oh, that would be great. So. We actually just spun up our first GIS division yep. um, at the beginning of this year as part of our strategic integration department. And so they are super excited. We're hiring one more person and they're, they're ready to rock and roll. They're excited about it. So, cool. yeah, I, I think that's what we think too. We think the interactive maps make a ton of sense. It tells great stories. It gives you lots of great information. Very intuitive. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if we want to, we're at 830. Time just flew by. I didn't even notice. You had to tell me. So if we want to continue, I think we have one more item under new business that uh, maybe we should try to get to so we can yeah. extend for 15 minutes or 8 till 845. All those that extend in the game day Sure. I'll second. Aye. Aye. My wife just texted um, me that we all should go home because the Nuggets are down by one at the end of the third oh, quarter. Oh, so we all should be right. home watching it. So make it quick. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. One other yeah, yeah. thing that we had from that our retreat too was that it's really hard to find rec classes through the website. You basically have to know to go to rec track and to spell it out exactly how RecTrack has something. It's not intuitive at all. That if you just went to the website and try to look for a class, you know, yeah, I think it. classes is also what we searched on the chat. That's, 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 that's what it was. That's what it was. Searched classes. And it was like, like nope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, that there makes sense. Because yeah. it's all contained. That's what we're telling Jeff, yes. right? Yeah. No more. It doesn't talk to anything No, yeah. yeah. When yeah. during yeah. COVID to get masters, you had to just leave it on. I had to leave that screen on my phone. Always. <laughs> Don't. Because you had to, you know, it was so hard yeah. to ever yeah. find yeah. it again. Yeah. I know I went to call yeah. to his other place too. Right. Yeah. No, I get it. It was just yeah, and it wasn't what they. And you had to have somebody show you. How did you? How did you do? You know that kind of thing. But that's because it was early. Right. But all right, continue to get better. And yeah. More and more upgrades. So, yeah. Thank you so much, both of you, for coming. Thank, Thank you so much for having us. If you have any other questions, these guys know how to get a hold of me. They get a hold of me every day. So. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to take my germs home. I might be out for a couple of days. <laughs> And thank you all for everything that you do. Your voices really matter, and as I said, don't underestimate the power of what you do for this community. Thank you very much. Sunset. Oh, thank you. Um, <clears throat> okay, so the sunset has opened. We got it open on time. That was a Herculean effort by staff after the, the <laughs> pool got filled with mud. Yeah. After the May, the May 9th storm that also destroyed the floor of my car in the morning. Um, in the end, we were able to add 19 parking spots to that lot based on some things they did and some creativity we have. Also, we're able to move a few of the golf staff out of the lot. Um, in addition to that, um, the first week of sunset being open, and this was you know, weather related. Um, we did add another 15, 15 or so spots in a lot below where the Sunset Golf Parking is, or I'm sorry, practice area. So we created a lot there. Golf guys are just, they did it. They were, they were awesome. Um, got some help from streets, bought some parking blocks. And um, so between those, we got about 34 extra spots. Um, staff knows to park in that lower lot from Sunset Pool between our guideline is between one and five to try to minimize. Um, we had originally lost about 45 spots, so we've got about 34 of them back, and then we're mitigating with a couple other factors. So it's not, I don't feel like it's much worse than it was. Now, there was always a problem, so 
that, that's a challenge. But dial in on this weather file too. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's not helping. It's not helping. No. Yeah. 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 I, I did run that the first week. It's, just, it's not pretty. Right. Um, yeah. So we haven't really been challenged with it, but we, we have various plans, and I, I think it's come together really well through a bunch of different folks in the city giving back to me and um, even getting going very quickly to have this happen, and, and then again the pool stuff and what they're liking. So. Um, yeah, that's where, as far as that goes. Now, the tank itself, that's their show. You guys see the giant erector set out there. Yeah. 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 So, any questions about that? Okay. And that all finishes this summer, fall. Year. Six, 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 oh, really? Year. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. That's why we considered that lot down below is such a good looking one. All right. Okay. And the signs do look good after all. Yeah. So was the parking lot used to be one way on the right hand side and then one way back? Or was it It never just was. It just functionally works that way. Okay. That's how people just tend to treat it. Okay. So it hasn't really changed. It's just that's what people tend to do. Okay. We just called on like outsiders and we're driving the wrong direction. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What are you doing? Yeah. 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 Car. yeah. Related to pools, the other thing I would just mention is that uh, both the activity pools are now open for the first time. Oh, yeah. 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 A couple of months ago, you weren't so sure about yeah. Roosevelt Park. Like, you were sure it wasn't going to open. Yeah, yeah. 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 With Roosevelt. Nice. There were a bunch of leaks and, and just just a lot of issues that needed to be solved. And, and those guys did a tremendous job of getting that thing going. That's great. And staffing came. Yep. Staffing, um, staffing has come around right. um, yeah. for sure. That hasn't been nearly the issue that it has been. Always an issue. Yeah. And the the opportunity to, to hire two full time, basically pool managers that we didn't have in the past has made a big difference as well. Mm -hmm. Great. That's right. Anything urgent in the last five ish minutes, <laughs> ten minutes? <laughs> From items from packet or anything else from staff. I just have, a, have a, kind of a stupid question. Uh, I don't know what EWF is, but somebody was very excited to write something about EWF. It's on uh, page ten. It's something about parts. Uh, all of the playgrounds. Is, is all the playgrounds have been refreshed with EWF. And this year, wood product. Oh, Those are wood shavings, look like wood chips, but they're not, they're the mess, so they don't move out of place and stuff. So I'm not sure. Uh, okay. got, I'm sure it's the last gift architect who got that excited. There's a wildlife biologist that took me a couple of times too. So. Oh, okay. It's like, I'd like to be excited for you, but I don't know what it is. <laughs> it, it really causes, you know, it's because of the fall hazards and stuff like that. It's almost like fucking sand, but those things are locked in place and it, it really reduces injuries and stuff like that. Okay. I, have two, I have two Greenway questions. Um, one on the phase 15, which is the east end, right? Mm -hmm. um, we've mentioned it for a long time the 1.5 million dollar CDOT grant. Uh, now we're looking at other funding sources. How much of that is this going to be a 10 million dollar project or a 5 million dollar? Is there some idea of how much that fills? There's a lot of moving pieces. Yeah. One of the pieces right now is the fact that when um, the states that we can no longer go under the underpass where the St. Brain goes to. That was always the intention, is we already had a underpass under 119. Um, we were going to put in a you know pedestrian path along the side of that, probably would have been like our year that sometimes it would flood during you know really high water marks. After 2013, they redid all the flood modeling and said, no, even though it's seed out the state giving us money to do that, it was seed out in their flood modeling and said, no, there's there's no way to mitigate that. So to get around that, it really requires another box culvert to go under the intersection of 119 and, and on County Road, five and a half, and that is about a five million dollar increase in that project. So that gets you a little bit. We are looking at grants and ways to do that. The other piece we have an adjacent landowner that um, again to get it up out of the floodplain. We see out the adjacent landowners. We have about um, a 2.5 million dollar retaining wall and mitigation work on that. So now we're at seven. We have a adjacent landowner that is not willing to sell us an easement, but will be willing to sell us this whole property, which falls in the ballpark-ish of those numbers too. So 
Um, but now we have some other options to it. it, it it's really all in negotiation with that. So we have, I can tell you right now, it's going to be at least um, five million dollars more, five point five. Oh, yeah. more than past. Five. Yes. Yeah. So, so then we have the easements, and then we have how we get through the payment. Quite a bit more than that. Yeah. All right. The other one was on the west side. I got one, two already down, so let's see if I can do <laughs> <Yeah>. Five minutes. <laughs> yep, quick. Um, the other trail mentioned in the regional trail plan was the 12 to Boco system. Screenway 12 to Boco system connection to that, what would that mean? Oh, so um, 12 is going to go from Golden Ponds out to Boco, Boulder County open space properties, which is right there across from um, 7th Airport, 75th. 75th. Yeah. 75th. Going over to what is still a private property, the county has an easement on that, and I think in about five years that will revert over to the county, and that then will tie in to Pella Pond. So if you're going to Pella okay, Pond, we'll Pella talk about that a little bit. That's the same thing. That's not the same thing. That's airport. Airport. Yeah, airport. 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 Yeah. 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 All those bocos in PW, Porter Place is the other one. I have, I have one a from, to, from the board. Oh, yeah. I've gotten several questions and comments about the tennis courts at Quail, wondering how often or what's the schedule for resurfacing. There are certain courts there are getting pretty chewed up, and whether it's from clay or shoveling or I don't know, but visiting teams ask folks about it. Oh, well, because this is a great facility, except what's with this? So. Is that a thing we submit? Hey, this is looking bad, or is this every five years you repaint them? Or I, I'm just curious. Both. It's kind of both. Now, I'll do these two jumping on kind of the professional side, but there really is sort of a maintenance routine that the Timber Park Superintendent uh -huh. kind of follows. Is that piece of it? We also recognize there's some areas that just didn't seal right. That there is probably some air pockets under it. There's maybe like so pickleball folks, the we'll tennis folks should <laughs> just put in. Hey, um, take a look at yeah, this court. It went okay. well. So if there's All something right. we can do, there's a, we want to keep it professional working stuff, and we'll make that decision if this is something we can, you know, make sure the level plays up and it looks good, or if we really have to go through that. But I, I can make sure that next time I'll get that rotation from Jim Brown one of yeah. the needs to happen. Five and eight in particular are the two worst, but the courts next to them are bad at Quail. And for whatever reason, it's not clear how that, you know, maybe that'll help you decide about shoveling if you think that's what caused it, or sunshine, right. or, I, you know, or but sunshine. is not a problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, it is in, because of the winter sun, you know. Not having it, though. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's the, you're right. It's the rain and ice and the combo. Yeah. And I wanted to throw in one minute. So from our meeting last week, uh, last time, we talk, I addressed about the uh, ramps around the park, around the tennis from, from uh, Quail. So uh, Phil Greenwald uh, sent over and we plan that by July 4th weekend, uh, two ramps are going to be put in. Um, basically, you go up the ramp, you take a right, there's like a walkway on the south side of the parking lot of the tennis court area. There'll be a ramp there, and then you take a left, and then the ramp. Um, basically to the access uh, path to the Greenway. There's gonna be both, both of those will be ground down and then there'll be um, signage uh, for cars to watch out for bikes. Again, for July. So this Thank is you. to cross the tennis court parking area basically. Correct. Yeah, okay. For I was bicycle a, access to the Greenway. Right, right. The, from the rec center. From the rec center, yeah. yeah. Well, that so, makes sense. So I noticed that there were just curbs. Right, yeah. exactly. I missed the last meeting. Cool, but cool. Awesome. yeah. yeah. Yay! Yay! <laughs> it's where kids run, so I have to put all these cones because it's a step. So. Right, yeah, uh, exactly. Cool. All right, eight forty-four. Remember that? Nice. Yes, sir. How do we adjourn? I said. All those in favor? Uh,